Welcome to a quick review of the gluteal region. In this short video, I'm going to review the most important muscles, arteries, veins, and nerves of the gluteal region. In a short moment, I'm going to switch into 3D mode, where you will require these glasses for the full viewing experience. The gluteal region is the transitional region which we can find between the trunk and the free lower limbs. We will perform this virtual dissection in a very similar way as we will do the dissection in lab, starting off with the removal of the superficial fascia. The muscles of the gluteal region all share a common compartment, but they are still organized into two layers. There is a superficial layer and also a deep layer. The superficial layer will actually have three large overlapping muscles. The gluteus maximus, deep to it the gluteus medius, and deep to the gluteus medius, the gluteus minimus, and, in addition to this, the tensor fasciolata. If I add back in the muscles, we can start dissecting this again from the outside. Now I've switched into 3D mode to give us an enhanced viewing experience. For this, locate your 3D glasses, and let's go! Alright, so first off, let's remove the gluteus maximus here, so that we can see what is underneath it again. Okay, here is your gluteus medius, and deep to your gluteus medius is going to be your gluteus minimus. We can already see a bunch of interesting neurovasculature coming into the picture here. So this muscle is going to be our key landmark muscle for the region, for the entire lab. This is the piriformis. Actually, that means pear-shaped. I'll leave it up to you to determine if you think it's pear-shaped or not. I kind of believe it looks a little more wedge-shaped. But the important uh, fact about this is that the piriformis will divide the space, yeah, uh, the greater sciatic foramen into two spaces. There's a super piriform space and an infra piriform space. And these are important because, because we have certain things that come out above and below the piriformis muscle. So coming out of the super piriform space, we're going to have our superior gluteal artery, we're going to have our superior gluteal vein, we're going to have our superior gluteal nerve, and these will supply your gluteus medius, minimus, and of course the tensor fasciolata that we can see right here. So let me go ahead and remove the iliotibial tract. Before I do that, let's just remember what this is important for the iliotibial tract is actually how the gluteus maximus manages to insert right down here on the so-called Gerdy tubercle, yeah, which is on the anterolateral aspect here of the tibia, of the lateral condyle of the tibia, and this is how it manages to insert here, and it helps stabilize the knee joint when the knee is in extension. Okay, so now let's have a look at the infrapiriform space. If we have a look at the infrapiriform space, here we can see a lot of interesting structures as well. The one that everybody is going to find very easily is the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in our body, and it'll pass midway between the ischial tuberosity, which is covered by muscles here, and the greater trochanter of the femur. Next highlighted now here in blue is your inferior gluteal nerve, and you can see the inferior gluteal nerve comes out of the infrapiriform frame together with the sciatic nerve, and this is going to be the nerve together actually with the inferior gluteal artery and the inferior gluteal vein, of course, that will be supplying the gluteus maximus. So I'm going to switch off the veins for a moment here, and now let's have a look at one of the most interesting features that we have in this region. It's also something that is coming out of the infrapiriform for, uh, foramen right here, deep to the piriformis, and this would be your internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve. See, these two structures have a really interesting feature because what they do is they actually come out of the greater sciatic foramen, then they loop right across the sacrotuberous ligament here just to disappear again within the lesser sciatic foramen. So this is also a good way how to find these and identify these structures because these are the only ones that are only going to make a very brief appearance back here and then just, just, they're just going to loop around this ligament and go right back in through the lesser sciatic foramen. One more nerve we have right here which is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh as you can see and as you can imagine, this is exactly what it is doing. It's going to be a sensory nerve to the skin of this region. Moving on, we have a total of six external or lateral rotators in the gluteal region. First, here's the superior gemellus, then there's the obturator internus, and here's the inferior gemellus. The first two here are innervated by the nerve to the obturator internus, and then the inferior gemellus is actually innervated by the nerve to the quadratus femoris, because the quadratus femoris is also one of our external rotators. And they just basically share the same nerve. 
So these two camellia that we can see here, that's actually quite interesting because they will insert together with the tendon of the obturator internus. In lab, this is probably going to look solely like a tendon, which is wedged between two thin little muscle slivers, and together with the tendon of the obturator internus, these are all going to attach on the medial aspect of the greater trochanter, because this is where all of our external rotators attach. If we have a quick look at the obturator internus, because it actually has an interesting shape, we can actually inspect it. See, this is actually truly an interesting muscle because its medial attachment is actually around the inner surface of the obturator membrane and the margin of the obturator foramen. And as it passes through the lesser sciatic foramen, which as you can see, it nearly fills up completely, it has to make this very radical turn to be able to join the superior and inferior gamelli on their course to the greater trochanter of the femur. And just above these here, you can see the attachment of the piriformis also on the greater trochanter of the femur, and just like the obturator internus, also the piriformis originates within the pelvis. Difference here is that it will exit through the greater sciatic foramen. Again, it'll create these two important spaces for us that are important for identification purposes, and then it attaches superior to these three muscles together, the triceps coxae. So if we now list our external rotators, we can list five of them, which would be our piriformis, our superior gemellus, the obturator internus, the inferior gemellus, the quadratus femoris, and one is missing, which would be the obturator externus. We will not be able to find it in this dissection, but if we quickly hide this structure, you can see here's the obturator externus. This actually arises from the margin of the obturator foramen and the obturator membrane, but then it also attaches together with these other external rotators on the greater trochanter of the femur, on the medial aspect of it. And this concludes this brief review. Thank you very much for your attention.